Can we open our community's observance of the 2021 Black History Month by honoring the man who started it all, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who studied and worked a short distance from here, long before creating Negro History Week in 1926. From the beginning of his creation, Dr. Woodson proposed an inclusive history of the world and argued against a separate history for Blacks. He explained in 1927, we should emphasize not Negro history, but the Negro in history. What we need is not a history of selected races or nations, but the history of the world's void of national bias, race hate, and religious prejudice. There should be no indulgence in undue eulogy of the Negro. The case of the Negro is well taken care of when it is shown how he, <clears throat> and I add she, uh, has influenced the development of civilization. As we honor Dr. Woodson with a new portrait of his likeness, we will apply his principles. There will be no undue eulogy of him. His accomplishments have been well preserved. Highlights are available on the program within Zoom. In a moment, we will unveil the new portrait. Then I and several Woodson admirers will react to this art. At the conclusion of this event, a Huntington Mayor Steve Williams will proclaim Carter G. Woodson Day. But first, Dr. Jerome Gilbert, president of Marshall University, will welcome you. Dr. Gilbert is a charter member of the Woodson Lyceum's Maple Grove Society, our support group, and he's a national member of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, which Dr. Woodson founded in 1915. Dr. Gilbert also is a charter member of Asala's new branch affiliate in Huntington. I present Dr. Gilbert. Thank you, Professor Morris. I want to warmly welcome everyone here today, either in person or virtually, as we open our 2021 Black History Month celebration. I'm so proud of our Dr. Carter G. Woodson Lyceum and all that Professor Bernice Morris has done with it. Today, we have a number of important people with us and I wanna recognize some of them either in person or virtually. We are very honored to have Asala Executive Director, Sylvia Cyrus. And as you heard, that is Association for the Study of African-American Life and History, the organization that was started by Dr. Woodson. Uh, we're also to, pleased to have with us the West Virginia State Historian, Joe Geiger. Uh, also, Dr. Geiger, uh, Mr. Geiger gave his permission along with Ms. Cyrus for us to use the Woodson photograph as the basis of the portrait that we unveil today. I also want to acknowledge Mayor Steve Williams, who was mentioned earlier, my great friend, who is our mayor, uh, I still, uh, I think we have uh, Marshall Board of Governors uh, members, Bill Smith and Bishop Samuel Morris with us virtually. Also, Dr. Corley Dennison, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at the Higher Education Policy Commission for West Virginia. Dr. Ryan Sachs, who is Superintendent of Cabell County Schools. And Mr. Eric Wagner, who is the Executive Director of the West Virginia Humanities Council. And I am also pleased and honored to welcome our special guest, artist Sasa Wilkes, who has completed a beautiful portrait of Dr. Woodson. I've seen the photos of the actual portrait, but I have not seen it in person, so I'm looking forward to that. Since Woodson spent many years in Huntington during his life, we claim him as one of our own. And we claim that Huntington is one of the cities that gave birth to the Black History Month. We are proud of our heritage and our association with Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Unveiling a portrait 
of the Father of Black History in Huntington, West Virginia on the first day of February is a very appropriate way to kick off the 2021 Black History Month at Marshall and in Huntington. I am very pleased that all of you are joining us either virtually or in person here at the Charles and Norma Carroll Gallery in Marshall's Visual Arts Center in downtown Huntington. Welcome to this very exciting event. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. Uh, before we unveil the portrait, I would like to introduce Sylvia Cyrus uh, and Huntington Mayor Steve Williams. Then I will introduce uh, Dr. Wendell Dobbs for the unveilings. Uh, first, uh, Ms. Cyrus, uh, who is Executive Director of ASALA and who joins us today from Washington, DC. Uh, I've asked her to greet you and later react to seeing the poster for the first time. Uh, hello, Sylvia. Hi, there. Uh, President Jerome Gilbert, Huntington Mayor Steve Williams, Dean Dobbs, historian Joe Geiger, esteemed guests, students, faculty, staff, and friends. It is my honor to represent our national president, Dr. Evelyn Brooks Hagenbotham, to join you today on this wonderful occasion to unveil the portrait for Dr. of Dr. Woodson. Known as the father of black history, Woodson was the son of former slaves and understood how important gaining a proper education is when striving to secure and make the most out of one's divine right of freedom. Although he did not begin his formal education until he was almost 20, his dedication to study enabled him to learn to earn a high school diploma there in West Virginia, as was stated, not far from where you are today. His first undergraduate degree from Berea College in Kentucky and a bachelor and master's degree from the University of Chicago in just a few years. In 1912, Woodson became the second African-American to earn a PhD at Harvard University. In 1926, Dr. Woodson initiated the celebration of Negro History Week, which corresponded with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. And of course, in 1976, this celebration was expanded to a month. The Executive Council of the Association extends most profound congratulations on this event as we begin the commemoration of Black History Month 2021. Our Black History theme is the Black family, representation, identity, and diversity. I would also like to thank and acknowledge David Harris, president of the Huntington Tri-State Branch in West Virginia and its founding members. And as was uh, mentioned earlier, the esteemed president of this university is one of those members and a charter member of the branch. We would also like to extend special thanks to Bernice Morris and the Carter G. Woodson, Woodson Lyceum and all that you do. Enough cannot be said about the contributions of Bernice Morris as he has provided historical information on Dr. Woodson that resides on our website for the world to read and know more about Dr. Woodson. Thank you for allowing us to participate this afternoon and have a good evening. Thank you, Sylvia. We look forward in a few minutes to having you uh, react to seeing the unveiling of Woodson's uh, portrait. Um, Mayor Williams, uh, would you like to make a, a few remarks? Thank you, Professor, Professor Bernice Morris. Thank you so very much. It is an honor, once again, to on February 1st, to be able to come and offer a welcome and uh, celebration for Carter G. Woodson. Fact is that here we are in Huntington, West Virginia, having this opportunity to celebrate Black History Month in a city where Dr. Woodson actually was present. We own the fact that we believe the Black History Month started in Huntington, West Virginia. 
what we have learned is that when you look at the example set by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, we can send a message to any who are able to utter the words of Huntington, West Virginia with the following, you can change the world from here. Carter G. Woodson has demonstrated that to us. What's most importantly in 2021 is that as we look back over the past year, so much has come forward in our daily life to recognize that there is so much more left to do. Racial injustice is a cancer upon our society. The only way that we can extricate that away from our society is by acknowledging what has happened in the past and with the knowledge of our history and the history of Blacks in the United States of America and the world. We thank Carter G. Woodson for that. And we're honored to be able to be a participating partner in this effort. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Williams will be back uh, later to uh, issue a proclamation uh, declaring this uh, Carter G. Whitson Day. Uh, now the show begins. Uh, Dr. Wendell Dobbs is interim dean of the College of Arts and Media. On this occasion, as a musician without a drum roll, uh, Dr. Dobbs is ready to introduce a couple of people and some art. Uh, Dr. Wendell Dobbs. Thank you. Thank you to my colleague, Bernice Morris. Uh, this project has been very rewarding for me personally because it permitted me to make the acquaintance of an extraordinary artist, artist Sasa Wilkes. The first work of hers that I saw was the bigger than life iron sculpture, Dancing with Max. Max is her son, by the way, uh, which is located in Harris Riverfront Park. If you've not seen it, well, it's hard to miss because it is very large, but I encourage you to go and experience the sheer joy that it invokes. Sasa is an alum from our School of Art and Design. She also holds a master's in teaching from Marshall University. Since graduating, every year seems to hold a new triumph. Most recently, she embarked on a project to create portraits of 100 influential women in 100 days. Uh, she started with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, if I'm correct, I think that's right, uh, and ended with Medusa. So, and you're going to have to ask her about Medusa. Okay, and uh, along the way, I appreciated as a musician that she included a number of musicians. There's Josephine Baker, there's Billie Holiday, Aretha Franklin, Dolly Parton, Judy Garland. Have I missed anyone? Is that all the musicians? I always have to mention the musicians. <laughs> Um, I've always appreciated visual arts, but this project, watching the portrait of Dr. Carter G. Woodson evolve, gave me a new sense of the creative process. I want to thank Sasa Wilkes for permitting me the opportunity to watch firsthand the creation of this very impressive portrait. And I believe that we are ready to unveil. So Sasa, can you, can you take one side of the veil and perhaps, uh, and Dr. Gilbert, can you take the other side? Okay, now supposedly, if you, if you reach sort of high, this comes off very easily. Okay, three, two, one. Asa, would you like to say a couple words about, about your creation? That was a super sweet introduction. Thank you, Wendell. Um, I would just like to say that I am incredibly honored to be participating in this event. I'm incredibly honored to have had the chance to um, learn about and paint Dr. Woodson. It, I, I'm at the risk of exposing my extreme ignorance. I had not even heard of this man until maybe not even a year before I was asked to do a portrait. And it was because my son was, um, 
interested in what was going on in our entire culture. And he was doing a lot of research and he was like, the father of black history is from here. Why do we not know that? Why? And it completely floored me that I didn't know that. So having the opportunity now to participate in something that surely I'm not the only one, hopefully I'm not the only one. So having the opportunity to paint him and be a part of this, this education of, of his life and his contribution um, is really a huge source of pride for me. And if you follow my recent work, you would know. I mean, I, I wasn't sure I was ever going to paint a man ever again. And he, after all the interesting women there were to paint, but he is definitely, definitely a, a deserving person to be painted. And I absolutely loved it. I love this whole process. I love, as a Marshall alum, it's extremely cool to get to do anything with Marshall. I really, I really love working with you guys. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was a pleasure from start to finish. One of my pleasures in serving as the interim Dean of the College of Arts and Media is to learn more about the other three schools in our college outside of music, because I, I came here to teach music and, and mostly I know about music. Now I know a lot more. The W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications has an incredibly rich history of success stories amongst its alumni. One of the most notable success stories is John H. Hooverus or Jack Hooverus as Huntington knows him, he has been continually recognized for his excellence of work as a journalist and an entrepreneur. He's the editor of the Huntington Quarterly Magazine, publisher of the Marshall Magazine, and is a leader who continually gives back to the Huntington community. He has endowed scholarships in our School of Journalism, helping to prepare the next generation of journalists. Now he is helping promote the legacy of Carter G. Woodson, uh, this next edition of the Huntington Quarterly will have a feature devoted to Dr. Woodson and the work of our Woodson Lyceum. And as icing on the cake, the cover will feature Sasa Wilkes' portrait. And I think, would we like to unveil at this moment? Would Jack, would you? And perhaps, and okay. Oh, no, not that one. Next one over on the easel. There we go. Jack, thank you so much for your attention to this worthy topic of Dr. Woodson and for featuring the work of your fellow alum. So would you like to say a couple words? Thank you all very much. We did a story on Carter G. Woodson in 1993, and I've always regretted the fact that I did not put him on the cover. Back then, we put a lot of pretty pictures on the cover. And you know, also at the time, there was no really good artwork of Dr. Carter G. Woodson. So when I started thinking about doing this for Black History Month this year, I thought I need a painting of him, and there was, there was none out there that I could find. So I was stumbling through Facebook, and I came across Sauce's work on the 100 women in 100 days. And I was very much blown away by her work. So I called up the Lyceum and I said, hey, I'd like to put Carter G. Woodson on my cover. I think you all need a painting. Why don't you guys get together and talk? And this is the result. So I'm very pleased. I'm very proud that I'm from Huntington and that Carter G. Woodson's from Huntington. And I hope everybody enjoys the work. Thank you very much. So some, uh, this is a, a fantastic association. Uh, so we have two, two Marshall University alumni working together and the best part of it is they're both from the College of Arts and Media. <laughs> uh, so this, this era uh, right now, we have also uh, had a competition where some new works of art have been created by young artists and we have on these other two panels, uh, those, those works. And so we wanted to unveil those and show those on this program also. Um, so uh, let me see, who's going to help me this time? Okay, so Bernice, if, if you can help me. 
and we it, it takes two. Okay, so over here, if I get this right, um, we have a work by Ellen Winters from Southside Elementary. Uh, she was a first place winner. Um, and this is the fourth year of all this competition, except for the, the Marshall, uh, the college, the collegiate level. And so um, hers is, uh, I don't know, is this one right here? Let's see if we can get a, a close up. Okay, and then Chloe Massey, Massey is the creator of the other one. She is a Huntington High School freshman. So she's the first place winner of the competition for that level. So no justice, no peace. And then over here on the other panel, thank you very much. Uh, we have, um, uh, let me see. Sorry, trying to read my notes here. Uh, Mila Werthammer from Barbersville Middle School is the first place winner um, the fourth year of the competition. Uh, her, her work is the one where you see the, the American flag as the background. Okay? And then finally, the fifth year uh, is Marshall University freshman from Chesapeake, Ohio, major in biomedical engineering. This is the first place winner in this fifth year of this competition. And it's the one there um, that you can see uh, on the left-hand side. So let's have a round of applause and I'll get out of the way. Thank you, Dr. Dobbs. To understand Dr. Woodson uh, beyond his impressive resume, uh, you may want to stare at his image on the cover of today's program or uh, Ms. Wilkins' uh, new likeness or the magazine cover. Uh, you may require some background, not widely known, uh, and I'll provide it. Uh, Dr. Woodson was the pioneer in a new field of study who attended to forgotten details of the lives of a disrespected people who had been displaced from history books. He was a stickler for the scientific method. No detail was too small for him to explain when he was reintroducing Blacks to their rightful place in history. Uh, he comported himself with dignity and honor on behalf of his cause. In the images he projects confidence. Let's consider remembrances of a former Dr. Woodson employee, uh, Ms. Willie Leanna Miles, who worked with him in his final years 1943 to 1950. I don't know when the photograph was taken on which the portrait is based, but Dr. Woodson appears to be in his 60s. And, in his, and uh, it was probably taken during or near the time Ms. Ms. Miles was working for him. Uh, here's what she recalled in 1991. Dr. Woodson had penetrating eyes, thin lips, in a very rigid posture. He was light-skinned, stood about five feet, eight inches tall, wore a size 10 shoe, a size 15 and a half shirt. In a moment, I will uh, quote Woodson saying he was five, uh, five eight and a half. Uh, and weighed 175 pounds. Bear in mind, Dr. Woodson was in his 68th year when I met him. He could tell jokes and anecdotes like a chain smoker, lighting one story in the butt of the other. He was an inexhaustible gold mine of knowledge. Dr. Woodson was somewhat aloof, somewhat of a lonely man, nevertheless tireless in his search for the facts about the history of our people. He found time for laughter and to chat with children. Just two months before Dr. Woodson's death, I asked him why he never married. In a roundabout way, he left me with the idea that some girl had jilted him. Uh, he let me know that his first and most lasting love had been his work since, since most of his lady friends just couldn't wait for him to complete his work. Uh, my workspace assignment was in Dr. Whitson's library, second floor front, opposite the staircase 
leading to the third floor. This allowed me an opportunity to hear conversations from his office. He seldom missed telling a visitor about the fact he was once a coal miner and once earned a living as a garbage collector. Ms. Miles's recollection of Dr. Woodson is consistent with what others who knew him well reported about the warmth of his personality, but a view not shared by those who knew him from a distance. For instance, this public-private conflicting view was confirmed when Dr. Woodson confided to a friend in a 1920 letter that he was contemplating leaving his job as Dean of the College of Liberal Arts at Howard University because the president wanted him to spy on faculty members who didn't attend chapel. The friend, Howard trustee J.E. Moreland, advised Woodson to try to get along with the president. And uh, Dr. Moreland said, uh, quote, of course you have a style of your own and you know how it affects your friends. Some of us who know you, some of us who know you well, look over it. Those who might not know you so well may be inclined to take you too seriously. I think that half the time you are unconsciously humorous. Um, <laughs> they had to be close friends if that friendship lasted after that line. <laughs> uh, having read many letters by and about Dr. Whitson, I was struck by Dr. Moreland's assessment and I too see unconsciously humorous uh, in both the portrait and in Dr. Whitson's overall life, even in his business dealings. For example, in 1941, he bought a home in Huntington as an investment and allowed his sister, Bessie Whitson Yancey, to live in it. He purchased furniture for the home only after imposing rigorous demands on the furniture wholesaler, prompting this response from the sales manager. In your letter, you state that if this furniture is not a superior sort and a quality to last a lifetime, to not release the shipment. I have gone over this order and find that the quality which was selected is of excellent construction and will give you under normal conditions long life. Insofar, lasting a lifetime, it would be impossible for any manufacturer to so label such merchandise. Uh, Dr. Whitson relented and approved release of the furniture. Dr. Whitson was just as meticulous with his clothing, as you can see in the portrait. Uh, during that same summer in 1941, when he was purchasing the home and furnishing it, he was engaged in separate tense negotiations to purchase several, quote, white broadcloth shirts. On June 4th, the saga began when he wrote New Prince's Company in Warren, Pennsylvania. Gentlemen, for the $10 enclosed, send me as many as it will buy of white broadcloth shirts. My neck measure is 15 and a half and the sleeve is 33. I am five feet, eight and a half and weigh 170 pounds. I have almost forgot to include $5 for a dozen of dark gray silk socks, size 11 and a half. He wrote on June 14th that he was returning the shirts, stating they are not satisfactory. I forgot to state that I desire shirts without collars attached. I did not wear the kind which you sent. As Dr. Woodson's friend, Dr. Moreland intimated, Dr. Woodson was unconsciously humorous. We have several other respondents to the uh, Woodson portrait today, and I will now ask them for their brief uh, reactions to the portrait. Uh, I am calling them respondents because I charge them with uh, uh, this role today, and they might want to refer the, to themselves as something else. <laughs> but uh, first up, I, I would like to hear from uh, uh, Miss Sylvia uh, Cyrus, who holds uh, the job that Dr. Woodson held uh, uh, several decades ago. Uh, Sylvia. 
Well, let me just say how delighted I am to see another portrait of Dr. Woodson in color. Many of the photographs that we have of Dr. Woodson were taken in times when there was only black and white photography and that sort of thing. So having an another, another portrait in color is really spectacular. Uh, that picture actually hangs behind my desk in my office. I look forward to getting back there again sometime soon, but this is just, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful portrait. I cannot wait to see it in person. And especially on this first day of Black History Month, I cannot think of a finer tribute to the legacy of the father of Black history. Well done, Sasha. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, Dr. Gilbert, do you have time to offer a few comments? Well, I can tell you I was there when it was unveiled with Sasha and I was blown away. That's to put it mildly. Um, it is so beautiful. Uh, I am just amazed at it. Uh, I love the green tie, of course. <laughs> we all have on our green ties and I am looking forward to finding a great spot at Marshall where we can hang it so our students will see Dr. Carter G. Woodson. I want everybody in Huntington to know about him and to know how proud we are. I tell the story, I was with Bernice last uh, January in Washington, D.C., and we had just been to the Carter G. Woodson home. And I got an Uber, and I got in an Uber, and the young man, probably in his 20s, started talking to me, and he said, where, what are you up here for? And I said, well, we're up here to talk about Carter G. Woodson. He immediately said, the father of black history. And I went, wow, that's what I want to happen in Huntington, West Virginia. When someone from out of town comes and says something about Carter G. Woodson, they immediately say, the father of black history, a Huntingtonian. That's what, and that's what this portrait is gonna help us do. It is fabulous. It is so beautiful. I am awestruck by it. Thank you so much. Uh, Ursula Ward, uh, is Ursula there? Yes, I'm here. Hi there. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Bernice, for giving me the opportunity to share some of my insights about this portrait today. It's an honor and a privilege to be amongst everyone. Uh, Ursula, can you speak up a bit? Uh, uh, we're having difficulty hearing you. Yes, it's an, is that better? Much better, thank you. Okay, so it's an honor and a privilege to be amongst you guys today. And the portrait is just outstanding. Uh, Sasha did a great job with the portrait. Yeah, I believe that it portrays the standard of excellence that Dr. Woodson exhibited through his work. Um, Dr. Carter G. Woodson is one of the Fairfield community's greatest entrepreneurs, producing a publishing company that educated the world on the history and contributions of Black Americans. And I believe that having this portrait in such close proximity to our offices and Dr. Woodson's former neighborhood will give hope and inspiration to generations of entrepreneurs. So thank you for the opportunity to speak and the portrait's lovely. Well, thank you. Um, next, uh, Superintendent, I'm sorry, Mayor uh, Steve Williams. Seth, I find this absolutely inspiring. Thank you so very, so very much. Thank you for giving us this portrait of, of Dr. Uh, Woodson. Look, if you will, at his gaze. As I was looking at it, I found myself with two separate thoughts. Is his gaze looking in the past with a look of contentment of being able to say, this is the history of my people? Or is he looking to the future 
not nearly with the level of contentment here in 2021, knowing that we have so much more to do. Whatever the case, however we view this, we walk away with the message from Dr. Carter G. Woodson. By knowing our future, we have to be able to recognize our past. Thank you, Sassy. Thank you, um, Mayor Williams. Uh, Superintendent Ryan Sachs, are you with us today? I am, hello. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you for having me. Well, we couldn't do it without you. <laughs> Would you like to provide your, your reaction to the portrait, Mr. Sachs? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And I must say, uh, uh, Mayor Williams just about took the words right out of my mouth um, as the portrait was unveiled and being able to see um, Carter you know, G. Woodson looking to the future. Um, I, I believe that it is very inspiring. Um, and to have this portrait right now next to some of our Cabell County students portrayal and reflection of black history, I think speaks to the volume of what it was that Carter Woodson was trying to accomplish. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, is uh, not, a, not understood by everybody is, is that Carter G. Woodson was actually a principal right here in Cabell County. And um, he had hoped that at one, at some point in time, that there would not be a need for black history. Um, that it would be something that would be ingrained in all Americans um, to recognize the contributions of black Americans. And I think that as he gazes into the future, uh, like Mayor Williams said, and he uh, instills a sense of inspiration among all of our students um, that, that they have the hope for a bright future. And I think that that's exactly what this portrait portrays is, is inspiration um, and hope for the future and what it means uh, to our community. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mr. Sachs. Uh, Janet Dooley is director of the uh, W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications. I don't know if most of you are familiar with the buzz that was started when Sassy was doing her 100 women in 100 days. But there was a lot of discussion online uh, a lot of us were out there looking at the work, looking at the pictures. In fact, one of them is hanging on my wall at home. So when Jack approached us to have Sasa do the portrait of Carter G. Woodson, I was ready. Uh, I was familiar with her work and I knew it was going to be a wonderful piece. And now to see this quintessential photograph of him translated with this vitality and vibrance and depth is wonderful. Woodson was a very strong advocate of use of mass media to tell your story. So it is such a fitting full circle tribute to have him on the cover of this magazine right in the middle of Huntington, right across the top. It is just a wonderful tribute uh, to him during Black History Month and we thank you for this. Uh, Dr. Monserrat Miller is uh, executive director of Drinko Academy. Thank you very much, Professor Morris. I'm very pleased to be here today. I'm honored to have an opportunity to react to this powerful piece of art. Um, I think that it speaks volumes about the synergy of an artistic and intellectual nature that characterizes our community. The city of Huntington, the area that surrounds it, the leadership of this city and of the university are of one mind when it comes to the arts, when it comes to the intellectual endeavors that are represented in this project. When I look at this portrait, I see a visionary, a visionary in terms of black history, but also a visionary in terms of the historical 
discipline itself. Carter G. Woodson played a very important role in the transition from a very narrow history that focused on the singular accomplishments of great white men to a more inclusive history that brought to light the experiences of African Americans in our country and inspired generations of other historians to move forward and explore various subaltern groups who had been left out of the collective narrative. We are stronger with a broader sense of history. And I am so pleased to be associated with the uh, Woodson Lyceum and to support the work that Professor Morris does. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Um, Robin Craighead is a teacher at uh, Huntington, I'm sorry, Barbersville Middle School. And uh, she is uh, uh, someone who has studied at the, studied at the Woodson Lyceum's uh, Summer Institute on uh, Black History. And I'm hoping that uh, Ms. Craighead is with us today. I'm uh, Robin, here. are you there? There I'm you here. are. How are <laughs> you? Here. I'm great. How are you? Great. Oh, do you have an impression of what you just saw in the Woodson portrait? I am thoroughly impressed. Um, what an amazing talent uh, Ms. Wilkes has. Um, I love the fact that it, it, you can see his confidence and his pride, you know, that he has in himself and in uh, Black Americans in that picture. But one thing that really stood out to me almost instantly was the light that is surrounding him, kind of behind him, um, because he lit the way for us to have uh, the study of Black Americans, because without Carter G. Woodson, I wouldn't be having a, a Black History uh, Month. You know, the study of it wouldn't be as a, um, advanced as it is now. So I'm just in awe. Of, of this uh, portrait and I cannot wait to see it in person. Well, thank you so much. Um, when I invited uh, uh, Robin uh, to speak, uh, she warned me that she had uh, a child who uh, uh, may appear with her from time to time. And I told her that was okay, we don't mind children. <laughs> uh, Corey Cunningham is a member of Omega Sci-Fi and coordinator of fraternity and sorority life at Marshall. Uh, uh, Whitson's fraternity was Omega Sci-Fi. And that organization celebrates uh, black history as much as any organization uh, in America does. Uh, Corey? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Bernie, for having me. Uh, and thank you all for having me as well. Uh, it's truly a blessing to be here uh, to celebrate and commemorate uh, a legendary man, an honorable man, uh, a Huntington icon, but also uh, my brother, a proud member of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, looking at this picture, uh, it embodies the core principles that we want to instill in all our members of Omega Sci Fi manhood, scholarship, perseverance and uplift, all the things that we truly look for in Omega Men. But also in Omega Sci-Fi, uh, we have a motto, and it's uh, friendship is essential to the soul. And while looking at this picture, I see that it touches everyone in Huntington, but also those outside of the city of Huntington and the state of West Virginia, and their soul a little bit, because it means different things to different people. And also with Huntington uh, being just the birthplace and our right of Black history, it's just an honor, as I said before, to be with you all and to show him that Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated is always here as confident men as we are, but also we can change the world, but also for our younger youth that anything can happen in Huntington. I thank you so much. Thank you, Corey. I, I should also uh, say this about Corey. Uh, he, uh, created a new contest for us a year ago, uh, the Black History Essay Contest. 
And it's uh, by far been the most popular thing we've done uh, since I've been uh, promoting events uh, at Marshall. Um, our next uh, uh, speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Eric Wagner, uh, Executive Director of the West Virginia Humanities Council. I mentioned that the Lyceum has a, a Summer Teachers Institute. Uh, and one thing I want to emphasize is that uh, we offer that institute through uh, major grants uh, from the Humanities Council. Uh, Eric, are you with us? I am, Bernice. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Great. Uh, well, I, I'm afraid I can't add much of value to the, the eloquence of the respondents who before. That's the problem with uh, going toward the end of the, of the roster. <laughs> but I would say how fitting I think it is that there are so many of us here from so many walks of life, from civic engagement to local governance to education. Uh, it really is a, a testimony, as Sass's wonderful portrait is, uh, it's a testimony to the continued impact of a life so meaningfully lived uh, and how, how wonderful it is and how grateful I am to be a part of, um, of this event. Um, and thank you, Bernice, for, for asking me to come on. Um, we are not only supporters of the Lyceum at the Council, but great admirers. Um, and thank you so much for the very necessary work that you do and have done and will continue to do and wish you the greatest of success in the future. Thank you, Bernice. What a wonderful, wonderful event. Thank you. We appreciate that too. Uh, Joe Geiger is uh, the state historian and director of West Virginia State Archives and History. Uh, we could not do an institute without uh, taking our teachers uh, to visit Joe. Uh, last year, we had to uh, bring uh, uh, the teachers to Joe using uh, uh, the internet, uh, but it was a great message nonetheless. Uh, Joe, are you with us? I am with you, Dr. Professor Morris. <laughs> Thank you so much for including me today. And, and as Eric noted, uh, uh, most everything that needs to be said has been said. Uh, I, I do, I'm looking at the photograph right now beside me on my computer screen and uh, what a wonderful job done by the artist. The, the attention to detail is, is magnificent. I was looking at the rivets in the, in the chair arm there, um, but I appreciate uh, all of the work that that uh, Bernus Morris does, and, and we're certainly grateful to be included. Uh, we consider it an honor to be able to go out and uh, pursue collections of prominent African Americans. Our state, uh, Elaine Blue from Huntington, uh, the Norman family, Tanner J. Livesey. We've taken in some wonderful collections, and and always keeping in mind. Uh, uh, Dr. Woodson's uh, work. So we're thankful to be involved and uh, uh, look forward to future work with you. We appreciate you, Bernice Morris. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, if there are teachers listening, uh, remember uh, we have the uh, enrollment period, at least application period, uh, going through March 31 uh, for the uh, next institute and we are certain to uh, uh, introduce you to the state archives. Uh, Dr. Dobbs, would you like to make one last comment about the, uh, uh, your impression of the portrait? And then we will have the mayor, uh, and then we'll have the mayor uh, read his proclamation. Well, I've asked everyone but you to give your impression. <laughs> Well, the, the thing that, that struck me uh, when, I, when I saw this, and as, as I saw it evolve, is that um, I know that photography is an art. Um, you know, there, there was this wonderful photograph that, that was the, the model. However, what I think SASA brings to this is an emotion. And it's an emotion that, that, that doesn't happen automatically. Uh, when you look at her other work, you see that, that portraiture is, is more than just an accurate rendition of, of the person's face. It's also being able to see inside the person and to bring that out through the art. And uh, in just my naive uh, way, that's what I see in this. And, and that's what I appreciate. So thank you. 
Mayor Williams, thank you. It is only fitting that in Huntington, West Virginia, that we begin Black History Month and end this celebration, looking over our shoulder at our past, gazing forward to our future. We offer this proclamation on behalf of the citizens of Huntington. Whereas Dr. Carter Godwin Woodson, 1875 to 1950, is the father of African-American history, a celebrated American educator and the son of former slaves whose parents helped build Huntington, West Virginia. Whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson, a former West Virginia coal miner who received his diploma from Huntington's Douglas High School, where he returned as principal four years later, beginning his journey to the Philippines as a school administrator and studying at the Sorbonne in Paris. Whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson studied at Harvard University and became the second African-American recipient of a PhD at that institution and the only son or daughter of former enslaved parents to receive a doctorate in history from any university. Whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson equipped with influences that included his Huntington background, created and led the modern black history movement, which began the restoration of African-Americans to the history books from 1915 to 1950. And whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson established the first Negro History Week 94 years ago on February 7th, 2026. And influence of his teachings have been used annually by the presidents of the United States in proclaiming February as African American History Month since President Gerald Ford. Whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson so ably taught Americans and the world about African-American contributions to history at a time when few people recognize their contributions. And whereas Dr. Carter G. Woodson has left a legacy of speaking a fundamental truth to the world that African-Americans and people of African descent are makers of history. Now, therefore, I, Steve Williams, Mayor of the City of Huntington, Cabell and Wayne Counties, to hereby proclaim the first day of February, 2021, to be Dr. Carter Godson, Godwin Woodson Day in the City of Huntington and encourage all businesses, people, organizations, and institutions to join in honoring this distinguished individual. Dr. We're off to a great start with this kickoff. Uh, please note our up upcoming events and their links on the program we provided. Next up is Angela Dodson, a former New York Times uh, section editor and member of uh, the Marshall Journalism Hall of Fame, uh, Wednesday at four o'clock. On um, February 10, uh, we have experts who will encourage getting the COVID vaccine. Uh, Please let me thank uh, Dr. Gilbert, Mayor Williams, uh, Sylvia Cyrus, uh, Sasa, uh, and other great guests who joined us uh, today. Uh, please have a happy Black History Month and Carter G. Woodson Day. Uh, one final statement is shout outs to, the, uh, to uh, Director Jamie Platt, uh, of the Charles W. and Norma C. Carroll Gallery and her staff as the gracious hosts of today's event and to IT staffers, Eric Himes and Ryan Vance for all they do in support of 2021 Black History Month. Have a good day. <laughs>